Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. We're talking about Zinc-15. This work is brought to you by the University of California, San Francisco, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Irwin Lab, and the Shoykit Lab. And the work is sponsored by the National Institutes of Health. Our topic for today is rings in Zinc-15. So I want to start by just introducing what we mean by rings, because some people mean uh, individual rings, some people mean ring systems, and sometimes people talk about scaffolds. So here I've shown the uh, drug imatinib, cancer drug, and I've shown that it contains four rings, four different rings, papyrazine, pyrimidine, pyridine, and benzene, and two copies of benzene. And here, rings and ring systems are the same thing. In the next molecule, this is atropine. And here you can see that there are two ring systems, benzene and 8 azabicyclo 3 to one octane, shown on the right. Now, you could take that some people would take apart that ring system into individual rings and talk about the individual rings involved. That's not what we're doing. So this ring system is what we're calling a ring in, in zinc. Now, as for what is a scaffold, scaffolds are partly in the eye of the beholder. Uh, scaffold is, implies more that you think that it's central to, the, to a, a congeneric series of, of bioactive compounds. And so here you'd need to know more about what the other compounds in the series look like in order to decide what the scaffold is. Scaffold will often be a ring system or a variant of a ring system, but not always. Before I get into the live demo, I wanted to tell you that the curation of rings is an ongoing process at Zinc 15, so we're continuing to work on it and make improvements. And we'll announce them on our blog and on Twitter when, when, when those, uh, that curation is, is finished. I also wanted to tell you that there's a new paper about zinc called Zinc 15, Ligand Discovery for Everyone. It's over at JCIM. It's free to download. Please do so and have a look and see what we've done. So let's get started with the live demo. This is zinc15.docking.org. And in order to access rings, you'd go under the More menu and select Rings. So this doesn't look too interesting so far. Let's go through the options. So there's Help, Examples, Browse, and Subsets. Let's start with Browse. So when we go into Browse, we are, we are presented with uh, a table for version of some rings. And these are the most common rings sorted by their uh, purchasability. So a, a, of all the rings of all the compounds in zinc, okay, the 150 million compounds, 14.5 million compounds contain a benzene ring, 11.2% of the numbers, and uh, of all the purchasable compounds, okay, of the biogenic compounds, of there are 91,000 compounds of biological origin that, or 20% of compounds of biological origin contain a benzene ring. Now that's a little contrary to what you, people sometimes think, that natural products are full of uh, sp3 carbons and uh, alcohols and things like that. So it's a little bit surprising. Endogenous human metabolites even contain, 4% of them contain a benzene ring, and so on. And you get the idea. There's, these numbers are computed statically. We couldn't possibly compute all of these for all rings uh, dynamically every time we load this page, and they're cached, but nevertheless, they're pretty good estimates. So, um, for any one molecule, so here's our friend papyridine again, uh, papyridine, pyridine, and so on. These are the most populous rings. If you wanted to sort by their uh, occurrence in, for example, world drugs, you could simply click on world, and then that's taking you to the bottom, and then takes you to the top. Oops, let's do that again. Okay, so benzene is still the most populous amongst the world drugs. Um, in fact, the order is just about the same, but this is now the sort order. 
And you can see that in the uh, URL sort equals minus uh, n world, the number in the world, negative, so that it's sorted in descending order. Okay, I hope that's not too nerdy. So if we wanted to look at a little bit more about an individual ring, we can click on here. And now we can see papyridine. Here's the picture. Smiles, inchy, inchy key. And now you can see the totals of the compounds, biogenic, endogenous, and so on. So if you wanted to ask, well, show me the compounds that, have, that are endogenous human metabolites that contain a papyridine ring, you simply need to click on this button here, and it will take you to the query. And you can see the query is zinc15.docking.org slash rings, papyridine, substances, subsets, endogenous. Let's take that apart just for a second. So rings, papyridine, that's fine. And now the substances belonging that the substances that are in rings papyridine. And then from among those substances, just the ones that are endogenous. So if you wanted to look at just the FDA approved compounds, you could simply do that. Okay? So these are these are FDA approved compounds that contain papyridine. So we hope that, and you can see here with the, um, the URL is here, but it's also repeated here. And so you can sort of backtrack through here. You, first of all, you can go all the way back to the home page. You can go back to the ring page. You can go back to the papyridine page there. Okay, so I hope that that is clear. We're gonna do world drugs this time. Okay, and, uh, and now you might say, well, there's 115 of them. How many of them are actually for sale? and all the things that you've used before. Turns out they're all for sale. So that's terrific. Um, so we're going to go back to the rings page. Okay. So as we scroll down here, you might say, okay, let's go look at thiazole. So let's look at the thiazole ring. Okay, so in addition to the counts, each of which is a query, you can also find out that thiazole is itself contained in other rings. Uh, so here are examples of other ring systems that contain the thiazole moiety as a sub substructure. And it, of course, it doesn't have a superstructure. But if you go into one of these rings, for instance, this one here, 3H thiazole, thiazolol, 4,5B quinaxolin 2 imine, you'll see down the bottom, first of all, that it contains, and so these are sort of decompositions of, um, so these are rings contained in this ring system. So I hope that's not too confusing that we allow you to navigate to the substructures of rings. Uh, and there's our friend thiazole back to the original one. And if you disagree with us on any of anything we've done, you're welcome to comment here, and you can ta the the comment will stay, will travel with the ring. We'll get it. We'll get an email, and then we can correct it if we uh, think if we agree with you. Okay. So there's more to do, but I like to keep these uh, videos nice and short. I hope that I've so if you wanted to get, for example, a screening library of substances containing this compound, here they are. It's just a standard zinc query. And so now if you want to download it as uh, MOL2 or SDF, yeah, let's download it as SDF, okay? And then when you, when you click on it, it's going to bring up those molecules in uh, Ozira's Data Warrior, which is a terrific program. And now you can use all the tools that you're used to using when you're uh, looking at two-dimensional molecules. So we hope we've, I've shown you how uh, you can work with rings and zinc. There's a lot more to tell. I will create more videos, but I, I like keeping these short and to the point. Was that helpful? If you think this is helpful and you want to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to hear more when we have updates, we do continue to curate zinc. We're actively working on it right now. You can uh, follow us on Facebook or on Twitter. And this work was brought to you by the National Institutes of Health.